Welcome to Kent and Hans, the best storyteller in Texas. You can find us at HansPodcast.com, and we would love to hear from you as well. Send email to info at HansPodcast.com. We start every episode with the saying of the day. Chancellor, what do you have? Always have something to look forward to. Keeps your mind positive, keeps something to think about that's positive and that you're going to look forward to. Uh, right now, it's Thanksgiving and Christmas, getting to see a lot of people you hadn't seen in a while. Of course, they could be a downside, I guess, but I think it's a real upside getting to be a family and uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving are great, great times. We've got a lot to get to today. There's a lot of things happening uh, in the news, but we, we would be remiss if we didn't start out uh, with some sad news that broke yesterday, and that's the passing of former First Lady Rosalind Carter. I know you knew her well. Rosalind Carter, one of the nicest ladies, nicest persons you'd ever meet. Uh, her concern and that her project that she undertook was mental health and uh, that uh, she felt like that at the time he was president, that there was not enough emphasis on mental health. And uh, so that, uh, you know, mental health became her big issue and she worked at it hard. She's very gracious. She's always kind to everyone whether you agreed or disagreed. She passed away at 96 years old. Nice lady. Let's move to some uh, Senate hearing got pretty escalated into a near brawl on Tuesday. Oklahoma's Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen asked Sean O'Brien, the president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, if basically if he wanted to fight. Here's how it went down. Quit the tough guy act in these Senate hearings. You know where to find me, any place, Anytime cowboy. Sir, this is a time, this is a place. If you want to run your mouth, we can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Big oh, hold, stop it. Is that your right. solution? Every poll. Oh, no, no, sit down. Oh, sorry, Eric, sit down. Okay. You know, you're okay. a United States senator. Sit down. Active. Oh, okay. okay. Sit down, please. All right. Can I respond? Mr. Hold Shim. it. Hold it. If Hold we can't, no, I have the mic. Said. I'm sorry. This is Hold what it. he said. You'll have your time. Okay. Can I respond? Oh, no, you can't. That's Bernie Sanders sticking himself in the middle of it. It's important to note that Senator Mullen is a former professional mixed martial artist, fighter, professional fighter. It would not have been a long fight, in my opinion. Uh, the professional fighter, the senator, uh, it, it would have been, he would have hit him and there would have been two blows. He would have hit the guy and the guy would have hit the ground. Um, you know, it, it, Bernie Sanders, I seldom agree with, but, but I think I agreed with him when he sat down, you're a U.S. senator. You know, you, you can't respond to everybody that comes along, and uh, you shouldn't get in that position. Uh, it was uh, uncalled for on both sides. They should have just moved on. I think it, it shows you how bad things are in Washington, uh, the hostilities. Uh, over in the house, uh, you know, Comer got in a, a shot match with uh, one of the other members, and uh, then uh, supposedly uh, former speaker elbowed a guy in the back uh, and in the kidneys, and and they've been up there going through this fight on speaker. Uh, the Senate's had a lot of issues also, and people are just tired and they're tired of each other. They need to get back and see the people they work with. I've always think that there's nothing better for a U.S. congressman or a U.S. senator to be back among the constituents. Then they find out what's really important. I've always stressed the importance of town hall meetings as well, how important they are. Town hall meetings, you know, any senator or congressman doesn't have some town hall meetings. Uh, they're missing out. Senators don't, don't have them as much. But most members of Congress have town hall meetings and that you show up no matter who you are. You show up and say, I don't like such and such or I like you know, and tell them what you think. It may have an impact. Well, President Biden uh, went to the West Coast to San Francisco for a summit with the president of China. And uh, we're going to get into some of the things that happened at that summit. But what grabbed everybody's attention 
was the president of the United States when asked if he thought that President Xi was a dictator. Well, look, he is. I mean, he's a dictator in the sense that he, he is a guy who runs a country that is a communist country that based on a form of government totally different than ours. Anyway. You know, you know that was a deal that uh, the, the facial expression of Blinken, the Secretary of State, was like, uh-oh. Uh, you know, it was true. He is a dictator, but they have a one-party system, and he's out of that one party, and he's, in fact, a dictator. So, uh, you know, it was uh, uh, truth, and uh, I, I would think they'll have a little pushback. But um, the, the whole thing, I think the most shocking thing to me about that meeting was how quick they cleaned up San Francisco. They got those homeless people off the street. <laughs> they got rid of them. They didn't want them to be seen, you know, and, and now they're back now. But uh, they, they bundled them up, got them out of town. Didn't want those uh, <laughs> cameras from all over the world showing those homeless people all up and down every street and uh, needles and, you know, things all around. And so uh, they, they went to work and got everything cleaned up pretty fast. But it shows if they want to do something, do it. Uh, of course, I've always said that, you know, if we had the problem homeless love, that if you had a bunch of them and you've got some, uh, you could get bus tickets and take them to L.A. You know, they like them. And the, not the present mayor of Austin, but the former mayor was, he went on a study of what to do about homeless people. And he went to Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, and L.A. I cannot think of four towns, cities, that have had the worst job of taking care of that problem. And uh, so, but he, he went to see what they were doing so that he could see what he needed to do in Austin. Uh, the the conference with uh, President Xi and, and uh, President Biden was, uh, was important to both of them. It was important to President Xi. The economy in... Uh, China is not doing as well, and so he, he he wanted something to show that he was working, trying to work to get more Americans to buy more goods and, and to work with leadership in America. Um, he also uh, knew he was going to get questioned a lot about Taiwan and what's happening, or the Chinese going to invade Taiwan, and, and you look at what they did in Hong Kong. They, they did not invade Hong Kong. They got it. You know, that was a treaty. And uh, Hong Kong was turned over to the Chinese. And, I mean, what has happened since then has just been that that area, that metropolitan area is not like it was. You can't say what you might want to say. There is not a freedom of speech there. And uh, they've had a lot of people move out, and so they don't have as many businesses uh, that uh, in the business client, it's not what it was. Hong Kong is a place I want to go visit someday, but I wish I'd visited while the British still had control. Um, I, I think that uh, anytime you have a conference, there's all, always going to be a lot of people trying to get to the front of the mic and say whatever they want to. But the uh, Chinese economy, uh, they're they're looking at trying to get to sell more goods. You know. Uh, there were a lot of tariffs put on uh, under President Trump, and uh, he, he was working hard to put tariffs on to make the Chinese lower their tariffs, and he was very successful in part of that. And uh, some of the tariffs still on, some of them aren't, but uh, that's an ongoing battle that uh, will be for a long time. One thing you have to look at is the Chinese have such a market. You know, the NBA has been soft on China, and let them do whatever they say, and they don't push back. And they're open to get into that market someday, just like that. You know, they looked at getting into the Mexico City market. That uh, basketball is a world sport, and that uh, there's a, you know, a, over a billion people, billion five hundred million people. You got a lot of people that. Uh, you can sell a lot of tickets to Chancellor. I did find it interesting that the uh, president uh, relied on an approach by that president Reagan made pretty famous and well-known. And that is the 
trust but verify approach to com- to a competitive relationship with the Chinese. You know, uh, Reagan was the one that first came up with that, and uh, it goes back when when Reagan was elected president, and they were having meetings before he took office. At one of the meetings, they were talking to Henry Kissinger was there, and they were talking about what was going to be their policy with Russia was it going to be leave each other alone. Uh, they talk, you know, whatever. And and Reagan goes, "How about this? We win and they lose." <laughs> and everybody looked around. Well, yeah, that's a good policy. <laughs> and and that's what he did. He implemented that policy because he got the Russians into spending on uh, national defense, and they spent so much it broke their economy. And that uh, and that's that's how the Berlin Wall came down. Had uh, completely changed the Soviet Union, which no longer exists. Russia still exists, but uh, Reagan was good at that. And uh, I'm sure that somebody in Biden's team went back and looked at it, and that. Uh, yeah, we trust we trust you, China. But we're going to have to verify. If you say you're going to do something, then we've got to make sure that it's it actually happens. It's got to be proven, and uh, it's, it's good policy. For all of our new listeners, we'd like to remind you that we release a new episode every Monday, and encourage you to go back through the library of episodes. Uh, there's a lot of great content there. Check it out, and also uh, to like and follow this podcast. Just tap the follow button uh, where you're listening. That way you'll get a push notification every time a new episode is released. And if you have a question or a favorite story that you would like to hear from Chancellor Hans, we would love to hear from you. Send an email to info at HansPodcast.com. Chancellor, did you see the story of that manager of a Dollar General in, in New York and what their scheme was? Yes, uh, they they were stealing from the company. This happens all over. It happens to banks, happens to Dollar General. And they sold $43,000, and the guy was a compulsive gambler. And what he was going to do, and they told the police, is he was just going to invest that $43,000 in gambling. He had some new new methods, so he's going to win big and pay the 43000 back, and he'd keep the earnings above 43000 <laughs> when he lost. I mean, that always happens. Somebody's going to invest in the stock market, or they, they steal a little money here, steal them, and then and it goes bad. And um, if you're tempted to take somebody else's money, don't. You, you watch forensic files on uh, cable TV, and people always get caught, whether it's murder or theft or something. They, it, it catches up with you, no matter what, with the sophistication that we have. In, uh, in police work, uh, whether it's state, local, or federal, and, uh, and the prosecutors we have in the U.S. Attorney's Office or the District Attorney's Office, uh, you're not going to get by with it. So, you know, don't do it. Chancellor, my grandfather gave me a piece of advice when I was a kid. He said, never bet on a horse or play in a poker game with borrowed money. You could apply stolen money to that as well. <laughs> You know, I mean, your grandfather gave me good advice. Don't invest in something with borrowed money. Uh, buy, go buy your racehorse. Guy told me one time from uh, Roswell, uh, New Mexico, he said that uh, the way to have a couple of million dollars in the horse racing industry is to start with five. <laughs> and it, that's, that, that was the way to do it. And uh, so I, I listened to him. And, you know, they say the win the Kentucky Derby, and there's some big winners, but the big winners didn't get there without losing along the way, and they, they learned it. They know the business, but uh, don't think that you're a rookie and going to all of a sudden get in the horse racing business and get rich. It's not going to happen. If you are looking to buy a Hyundai, good news for you. You can now buy one on Amazon. I saw that, and I just laughed. I mean, Amazon's out there. They're aggressive. And one of the things they're doing, they still have to sell it through the local dealer. And uh, one of the things they're doing is the financing. You know, you finance a car and there's money to be made there. And uh, so uh, they're, they're going to be selling all kinds of cars and SUVs and pickup trucks uh, on Amazon. And that's coming, but you'll have to pick it up from the local uh, dealer in, in most states. And you can do it. You can't get two-day delivery 
uh, you know, you'll have a little chance, you know, if you got to get approval of your credit rating first. I, uh, one time was making a move and went in a Best Buy store and told the guy I needed a washer, a dryer, three TVs, and a refrigerator. And I only had 20 minutes. He said, uh, it'll take that long to fill out the credit application. I said, I won't pay cash. And this guy looked up in the sky and said, God, thank you. I knew it'd come someday. <laughs> you know, and that he's going to make a commission off me. He'd been waiting years. Somebody show up that they weren't going to, you know, I said, okay, okay, let's go. And, uh, and he, and I said, can you deliver on Saturday? He said, from what you did, now you paid for it and everything, absolutely, we'll have it there. And uh, so uh, I got it delivered on Saturday. Going back to buying the Hyundai on, from Amazon, it's something that you've pointed out in the past, Chancellor, uh, is that Jeff Bezos and Amazon have figured out the easiest ways to separate you from your money. It's easy with Amazon. That, they're good. Amazon, you know, I, I saw the story where the – People went to check on their neighbor because they had n- not seen the prime Amazon truck at their house and van <laughs> at their house in two or three days. It's afraid they'd die or something, and they weren't delivering goods. But they, they make it so easy. And, you know, the a friend of mine, John L. Cox, uh, deceased, he was in Midland, and uh, he said that, uh, that in World War II, too many troops – stood in too many lines and that's what's made the fast food industry and amazon and walmart and everybody like it what made them a lot of money they don't want to stand in line they don't want to wait a long time uh, they want to do whatever they wanted to do and get on with it Cox is also the guy that was an all southwest conference football player and that he, he was mentioned uh, you know like i may have been second team all southwest conference and then he, some little publication that nobody had heard of listed him as an honorable, honorable mention All-American at Rice in the chemical uh, building, chemical department, uh, chemical engineering department. It's named after him. And so we were at a bank at one time, and he was being honored. And the guy introduced him and said, Johnny L. Cox was all Southwest Conference and All-America, first team All-America. And Cox leaned over to me, and he said, I live long enough, I'm going to win the Heisman. <laughs> <laughs> Please follow us on Instagram. It is at uh, Best Storyteller Podcast. And again, uh, go to our website. We've got uh, great written versions, blogs of Chancellor Hans's podcast with a new episode coming out uh, every Friday. In Wisconsin, Chancellor, there was a car thief caught by police, and he picked a very interesting place to hide. Hey, hey, you know, hey, you talking about stupid criminals. This guy was right at the top. There were four people hijacked this car. There were four criminals hijacked the car, and they were doing a chase. The police were, you know, getting about to catch them, and they slammed on the brakes and ran into a tree or something, and all four got out and started running. Two of them ran across a golf course, and one of them saw there was a porta potty where they were having some construction. And he goes in the port potty. And a golfer had watched the whole thing, and he went running over there and locked the port potty locked the guy in. The guy stuck in there, and he had a couple other golfers, and they got to shaking the port potty and turned it over. And the guy was cussing them and, and was really upset, but the uh, police uh, did not put him in there. They sent for the paddy wagon. Uh, they didn't want to ride after he turned over in the fourth body uh, mm. not not a good decision you know, you know a, a stupid criminal but that's the second time that's happened in the last three or four months in different mm-hmm. places and that uh, so if you're gonna try to hide someplace porta potty uh, should not be your first or second choice it reminds me chancellor of a great uh, christmas classic uh christmas vacation when cousin eddie showed up in the winnebago did you see Christmas Vacation? Yeah, we watch that every year. Uh, that's just a disaster, <laughs> and it's funny, and it's you know you just think a cousin like that shows up and they had not they had a an old uh, Winnebago and uh, or something comparable, 
and they had not unloaded their sewer in a long time. They did, and it blew up and <laughs> caught stuff on fire, and then the house got on fire. I mean, it was just one disaster after another. But it's pretty funny and uh, is well worth the watch when you got a little time. Uh, I think that uh, my family's watched it so much that uh, they all know the lines. They have the lines memorized by the time they come up. Thanksgiving coming up this week. There's a lot of tips out there if you're hosting a Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know if you saw the one about uh, when you should set up a buffet. They recommend if you're hosting more than 10 people or, or, or so is to set up a buffet. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, you know, they had several things in there. The number one suggestion was don't play with success. If, if, if something's worked in the past, make sure you you know, continue to operate that way. Now, they had, if you got 10 or more, have a buffet serving line. Everybody go by the kitchen bar and pick out what they want. But we do that with three or more. Uh, where, you know, it's just a lot easier uh, to do that, and uh, uh, everything goes well. Uh, it, uh, I, I think that, you know, they also tell, and I had not thought about this, that make sure when you start that the dishwasher is empty because it's going to have an overload. And also make sure that the refrigerator and the freezer, but especially freezer, you have everything aligned so you'll have enough room because people will bring out the dishes and things like that. But they had some pretty good tips, and uh, it's uh, fun to think about that uh, the, the different things that you try to do uh, on uh, Thanksgiving, make sure that it, it goes, you know, that, that you have a game plan, like, you know, having the refrigerator right in the uh, uh, empty dishwasher. But I, I think I was really surprised that they were thinking that you'd have to have 10, you know, people before you do a buffet. You know, I, I'd say if you got one or two, you don't really need to. Three, three, that's, that's our magic number. We go to a buffet here. Thanksgiving's a great time to uh, use one of your favorite words, and that is to anticipate. It's a good time to anticipate it in several things. You know, who all you're going to have, where they're going to be, where they're going to sleep, how long they're going to stay, and uh, then I'll also uh, anticipate what football games you're going to be watching. <laughs> uh, Texas Tech and University of Texas play next Friday. It's coming Friday at 6 6 or 6.30 and uh, on ESPN, and uh, that'll uh, be a good game to watch. Uh, UT will have a sellout, and uh, they'll have 102,000 people there, yelling, and uh, it'll be a, be a fun game. UT's in the situation there, 9-1 and one, or 10-1, 10-1, I guess now, first 10-1 season since 2009. And uh, they're, they're trying to make sure they get playoffs in the uh, there's a lot of a lot of teams trying for the playoffs and uh, a lot of unusual scores in the last few days probably you you look at alabama and they lost that first game to texas alabama's probably better now than they were and they'll they'll be playing georgia again for sec championships we'll see what happens on that this is ken hand signing off uh, always have something to look forward to and speaking of something to look forward to, uh, after the uh, Thanksgiving, we're going to have on that Monday after Thanksgiving, we're going to have Drayton McLean, great American, great businessman, on the Houston Astros for a number of years, and is one of the most gentle persons I've ever known. Uh, if you looked up the word gentleman in the dictionary, his picture ought to be in there. He's a good guy. And he's got he's got a great story, and the story is about how did he get where he is today, and uh, he talks about how it took him two and a half years to finally get in to see Sam Walton. He kept trying uh, everything he needed for two and a half years. He finally got seen. We encourage you again to go through old episodes, uh, listen to the back catalog. There's plenty there to listen to. Follow us on Instagram uh, at. Best Storyteller Podcast, and we'd love to hear from you. If you have a question, a comment, or a correction, we're not above a correction, uh, let us know. Send email, info at hanspodcast.com. Chancellor, happy Thanksgiving. 
and a happy birthday. Happy Thanksgiving to you, and uh, I was glad to get a happy birthday.